Welcome AP students. Today we begin our unit five rev review. So we have uh, a test upcoming, you may have noticed on RenWeb uh, in two weeks. Uh, so that will be over four, five, and six. So we're gonna move through unit five in two virtual lessons, first today and the last one will come up on Wednesday. And then I'll start unit six on Friday. So kinetics, chemical kinetics, uh, rate, reaction mechanisms, uh, K values, uh, all those things are uh, important within this section. So we're going to go through all the key concepts and do some practice problems uh, along the way. So first off, reaction rates and the experimental data, really important. So the rate of reaction is the speed at which a chemical reaction occurs. So it is how quickly reactants are turning into products or you could say how quickly products are forming. So it is very much about change over time. So change in concentration per unit of time. So product being formed or reactant being consumed. And here is the general equation for that. So the rate is the change in concentration divided by the change in time. So the time, well, it depends on what you're looking at. It could be seconds, it could be minutes, uh, hours, days. So there's different uh, time mechanisms on here, but that is the general formula. So here, uh, let's look at this example. So if we look at this beaker at the top, we see this purple solution has these uh, particular molecules in here. So at time zero, which is right here, it has number of molecules, it has 50. So as time continues on, when you look at say 20 seconds later, it went from 50 down to roughly say 11 molecules and look at what happened with the formation of the product. It went from at zero, uh, at one zero seconds, it had nothing. And when you go to the 20, it has about say uh, 39. So uh, very important looking at graphs. Graphs show us a lot. You can plot off of the graph. You can take your different variables. You can plot the slope of the line. So these are all things that are important when you talk about chemical kinetics. Let's define uh, reaction rate. So the reaction rate is the increase in molar concentration of a product of a reaction per unit of time. I mean, we mentioned that already. It can also be expressed as a decrease in molar concentration of a reactant per unit of time. So here is a graph and kind of we're just going to take a moment and look at this. So the rate of the chemical reaction is defined as a change in concentration of a reactant or product per unit of time. So think about this. If you are talking about the change in a reactant, it's going to become smaller. So you are going to have a negative rate. The rate is going to be decreasing its concentration, so it's a negative. When you talk about a product, it's going to be positive because it's now, it's building. So how exactly is that come about? So here is a formula. So two kinds of reaction rates, you have instantaneous or the average, and that's the one we're gonna do is this one right here. So you have concentration two minus concentration one. So let's look at here is, here is concentration two and here is one. Let's say this here is five and this here is uh, 14. How do you get this negative number? Because you have C2, which is five minus the 14. And that is going to be negative. So you have, how's it gonna be negative if you have time? Let's say this is uh, three seconds and this is uh, 15 seconds. So your time to would be 15 
uh, minus three. And that's how you would solve that. And yes, you would get a negative number because what's happening, that concentration is going down. So the rate is taking it from its maximum concentration to a new concentration as the products are building. So you can look at the slope. We're not going to take a time to do this at this point, but that can give you the change in rate at a specific time if we're looking at it in that regard. But using a graph is really important and be able to interpret it is as well. Hopefully this helps. Uh, little hint, your morning bell work assignment is something very similar to this. So hopefully you've taken a look at this virtual lesson and it'll help you with your uh, morning bell work activity. So the rate law expression, that's our next key concept here, the rate law expression. So we have uh, this reaction here, A plus B reacts to form C. So we could write it as rate equals K, concentration of A raised to some M power, and B raised to N. So M and N are the reaction orders. The sum is the overall reaction order. And we'll look more at that here in a second. And then we have our K constant. Our K constant is specific. This is the one you've got to be concerned with because your units are really important. It is specific to a reaction at a certain temperature and a certain order of reaction. We'll talk more about that in our, in our uh, second virtual lesson on this part, in this uh, unit. So the rate law expression. So for the reaction A plus B equals C, D, so the rate is A, raised to m b raised to n and that's what you're going to you have to figure that out so where k is a specific rate constant m is the order of the reaction in respect to a so this right here is in respect to a that's the order of a and when you look at n it is specific to the order of b you could be asked a question what is the order of the reaction in terms of A or in terms of B. And you would have to designate that as what, in this case, M or N is. So when you add them together, those exponents give you the overall order of the reaction. So zero order, first order, second order, uh, some third order, going above third order is uh, not, not really, very common to go over that and we'll talk more about that as well uh, in this part b lesson so determining the rate law expression very important key concept the rate law must be determined experimentally it must be determined experimentally so you have to have information given to you in order to solve for the rate law expression is not related to the stoichiometric calculations. It's not what it's about. It has to have experimental data. So examine the concentration versus time graph. And from the graph, you can plot some points and you can get some things and calculate your rate constant. Uh, we, looked at, we looked at using uh, data boxes and we're gonna look at an example of that here in a few minutes. So the order of the reaction, really important. So please uh, check your notes on this. If you don't, please jot a few notes down. Zero order. So a zero order is rate equals K. So the change in concentration of any of the reactants does not have an effect on the rate of the reaction. So it is, it doesn't matter if you double, triple, quadruple, the concentrations, it has no effect on the rate. So that is rate equals K. That's the rate order expression. So if you talk about a first order, so rate is directly proportional to the reactants. Doubling the reactants doubles the rate. So if you double the concentration of the reactant, it doubles the rate. So uh, this is a very common, first order reactions are very common. And we're gonna look at decay and all that stuff in part B of this particular section. But this would be your expression right here. Rate equals K and A, which uh, you wouldn't have to write the one there. The one is understood, meaning that that's a first order reaction. And then you have second order. 
uh, the rate is quad quadrupled when the concentration is doubled. So you double the concentration, you quadruple. Uh, if you tripled the concentration, you have now applied it by a factor of nine, and that's important. So that says you got a second order. And these are common as well. So first order and second order are common. Third order, not so much, and fourth order, that's, that's very, very rare. Uh, so when you look at how would you write it, it would be rate equals k a squared or k a one and b one so either way written right here would be your rate order expression so very important reaction orders so uh we're going to look at this a little bit more when it comes to the graphs of them and that'll be in our uh, part b uh lesson a virtual lesson of this so collision theory, before we go too much further, we talk about collision theory. Now we looked at a lot of particulate models in this particular section and the speed, or you could say energy, the energy and the orientation is critical for reaction to occur. That's why when you get to fourth order, it would it'd be very hard to have four different molecules strike at the right energy and in right position to make something happen, to make a reaction proceed. So that's why that's difficult to do. So let's look at what it means to be a fruitful collision, a fruitful collision. So we want to produce AB. So AB must collide straight on, as you can see here, in order for this reaction to occur, to form into AB. So you have uh, diatomic A, so this would be something like, and this would be something like that. So when they strike, now you have here AB, AB. So when you look at what is happening here, it has to strike in this position and the, the right orientation, and it has to have the appropriate energy for this reaction to occur. So if you look at if these just struck as in this one right here, they just hit straight on, doesn't matter the energy, it's not going to have the reaction occur. So all they're gonna do is strike and, and ricochet off and you're still going to be diatomic B and diatomic A. So it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. So the collision theory says you have to have the proper orientation as well as the proper energy. So if we look at this particular reaction here, uh, reactants moving too slowly, so they don't have enough kinetic energy. So it strikes and nothing happens here. And that's looking at what's here. Bounce back, they bounce away, and nothing has occurred. Reactant not facing the right way. So here you have them striking. They have enough energy, but the orientation right here is not correct. So they just ricochet off. So if you want this particular reaction to occur, it has to have enough energy, and this must collide, this C right here, this carbon must collide straight in like that orientation, and then you would produce this, nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide. So very important how the orientation and the energy is. So that is collision theory. Hopefully some of this stuff is coming back. You remember uh, a lot of this. So what I wanna do is because reaction rate expression, the rate law expression is really important. And there is a collage of problems that you could see. This is a common one. I would pretty much uh, think that you will have something like this on the AP exam. So I wanna take a moment and work this. We have done a lot of these in class, so I, I, I'm fairly confident that most of you are fairly proficient with doing these at this point. So one of the process, doesn't matter if you have two or three reactants, you have to find the concentration where it's equal on, on say reactant a has to be equal and B is different in order to calculate B and then vice versa. B has to be the same and A is different. That's how you choose that. 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at determine the rate loss. We're going to do three things here. Determine the rate law expression, calculate the rate constant, and determine the order of the reaction. That's what we're going to do. So when we look at this right here, so we're going to write out our expression as this before we even start. So I'm going to go rate equals K, and we have concentration of A, and that's raised to some X right here. And then I have concentration B raised to some Y right there. So I'm going to calculate first off here, I'm going to look to calculate, uh, I'm going to look to calculate A. I'm going to just jump on to here. So for A, I have to choose one and three because on one and three, the concentration of B is held constant. That's how I can know for sure what A is doing to the rate of the reaction. That's why that's very important. So when I set this thing up, I'm going to go, a and this is three divided by a of one. This is the concentration. And this is raised to x equals, and now I have my rates here. I have 0.8, and that's molar, and then I have 0.4 molar. So now I can plug in here. So this here is going to be uh, 0.40, concentration is 0 0.40, concentration 0 0.20. This is to X equals 0 0.8.4. So when I get my calculator out here, I divide this thing out, I'm gonna have 2 raised to x, and this is gonna equal 2 on this side. So uh, all I have to do on this right here, I could say that x equals 1. So 2 raised to the first power is equal to 2. So I have calculated my order for uh, A. So the order for the reaction in terms of concentration of A is a first order. So I have X equals one. So now I have to do the same thing for B. I have to look here. Well, in this case here, I have one and two. So I'm going to go the concentration of B and we're going to be uh, 2 divided by concentration of B, uh, and that is the first one, equals, and when I look at the, the rate here, it is going to be 1.6 divided by 0.4. All right, so now I can plug in. So I am going to have here uh 0.40 divided by 0 0.20 equals 1.6 divided by 4 so i'm going to have two rays and this was here all to the y right here i should have put that right here as well so this is right here is going to be 2 raised to y equals 4. So that is y equals 2. So 2 squared equals 4. So now I've calculated my rate law expression. This is a third order reaction. So I can come back over here and rewrite this. So I'm going to go rate equals k times the concentration of a to the first and concentration of b to the second so the overall order of the reaction is
third order. Uh, I got my rate law, and now the only thing left is to calculate rate constant. And I can pick either one of these, it does not matter. So I'm just gonna pick the first one right here. So I'm gonna go the rate, and here, and this is really important how I have this. So I'm gonna go 0.4 molar, and this is per minute, and this is equal to K. And then I have here 0 0.20, and this is to the first. I have 0 0.20, and that's squared. And this is molar, and this is molar. So now, if I get my calculator here, I'm gonna have, So, 0.4 molar equals K, and here I have 0 0.008 molar cubed. So now I'm gonna divide both sides by this. So I'm gonna divide by 0 0.008 molar cubed. So now when I look at this here, I'm gonna have 0.4 divided by 0 0.008, and I have 50. So let me rewrite this here. So K equals 50, one of the molars cancel. So I'm going to raise this up and I'm gonna have And this is my expression. So I have k equals 50. And on the denominator, I have uh, molarity squared per minute. Molarity squared per minute. So that is my expression, my k value. So hopefully that rings a bell to you, comes back. We worked a lot of these problems. You have a lot of them in your examples, in your notes. So hopefully you can look back on that and you remember the process of doing these. Remember, you have to, it doesn't matter if it's uh, two or three reactants, you have to find the ones held constant, take them, and then uh, utilize this basic formula. It's not provided to you, it's just expected that you know the process to do that. We'll look at the kinetics uh, problems that they're going to give you, uh, half-life formula on the next virtual lesson. So that is it. On this, this will get us started. Uh, please remember you have AP Classroom work. You also have a free response AP question. It's a really good one for the kinetic section. It actually pulls in a lot of information from some of the, from the past units we've looked at. So uh, work through these things. Begin working on your Five Steps to a Five book. Uh, everything's in RenWeb and on uh, AP Classroom. So we'll have our next lesson come up here on Wednesday, virtual lessons. Go in peace, have a great day.